So in our city, a group of volunteers came together to create a movement to forever change our town. So we're here today to tell you what we did in our city and through our example show you how you can inspire change in yours. Change. I'm not talking about a short-lived trend, a click, a blip on the radar. I'm referring to a groundswell, a tectonic shift that will forever move your town, a grassroots movement. Now, there are several elements to create a movement like this, and these are elements that we are using right now to battle a serious misperception of our town's image. Paul, tell them what's going on in Reno. Reno, Nevada is our home, and it was being labeled with negative connotations by people who have never been there. The city started to make worst place to live, worst place to visit lists. Pop culture started to use Reno synonymously with a seedy place. <laughs> Here's some examples. On the popular show Glee, for all you Gleeks out there, one character said to another, hey, you need to lose the skank act and get it together. You look like a real housewife of Reno. <laughs> On Saturday Night Live, Seth Meyers joked, according to a new list, the least happiest city in America is St. Petersburg, Florida. But that's only because Reno, Nevada finally killed itself. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Reno 911, right? <laughs> Lieutenant Dangle, Deputy Trudy. The show is an imposture of what it's like in Reno, and it's not even filmed there. A character in the show described Reno as, a lot like Mayberry on the TV, except that everyone's on crystal meth and prostitution's legal. That's not true. It's not true. <laughs> there are a lot of examples like these. It became apparent that mainstream media started using our city as a cultural reference for a place that sucks. So let me ask all of you something. How would you feel if everyone thought your city was a dump? We knew that we needed to change this because, quite frankly, we were sick of it. Mm -hmm. But somehow, we needed to find a way to change this with no money and no authority. Because after all, we're just a group of everyday normal citizens. Paul and I are both students at the University of Nevada, full-time professionals in the city. Our whole, our whole group was like this. We were just volunteers. But we had pride and passion for our community. We believe that the brand has to come from the community so it can speak to the community, a true and genuine grassroots movement. If we could rally our city, we could have 300,000 brand ambassadors sharing the greatness of our town with the outside world. So this is what we did <laughs> and what you can do in your city. Few of us just started meeting after work in coffee shops. We we're a group of volunteers, and we knew to truly get something accomplished, there was no room for personal agendas or egos. We weren't trying to create a new brand for our town, but rather do something to take the attention from the negative and shine the light on the positive. That starts with a singular message. Now, in five years, our region used 10 different taglines. 10. <laughs> we were really scattered, and we seem to have forgotten that for 100 years, Reno is known as the biggest little city in the world. And our research told us that this slogan holds a global brand equity. Everybody knows it, but more importantly, it's treasured by our community. So we sought to reestablish its meaning to give us an accurate identity and then surround it with authentic content and stories about what it's really like in our town. We built a campaign around the oxymoron of the phrase, biggest little, because the greatness of our town is big things in a little city. There's big opportunity with little pressure. We have big events that draw big crowds, but there's little hassle to deal with. We're a town of big talent, but a little ego. We have a tier one big time university and little colleges. Our city is surrounded with big mountains with a little Truckee River running through it. <laughs> Reno is the biggest little city, and this is an authentic brand of what it's really like in our town. To get the movement started, our group produced five stories about a local developer, a chef, an athlete, a teacher, and a student. We created videos, billboards, ads, life-size cutouts, we printed t-shirts and stickers. We put this stuff everywhere we could. Local media even donated ad space to the cause. Everything we did encouraged people to share why they love their home at a website we put up at biggestlittlecity.org. We also encouraged people to use the hashtag biggestlittlecity with sharing posts, pictures, and videos online. And we made presentations to groups, 
rotary clubs, really anybody that would listen. Anybody. <laughs> and the movement grew. We started seeing thousands of biggest little moments and stories online. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram became flooded with pictures of Reno events, public art, the sunrise over the Sierra Mountains. You see, the biggest little city movement made people feel proud of their city. And together, as a community, we began changing perception and bearing all the negative content out there. There was this nine-year-old boy, Joey. He fishes in the Truckee River downtown. He joined the movement by sharing his story with us in four words. Big fish, little worms. <laughs> the beauty and incredible lifestyle of our town has been kept a secret. Did you know each morning 300,000 people wake up in Reno? That's not an accident. We love our home. But we're not here just to tell you how cool our town is. We're here to show you that a community-driven grassroots movement, when fueled by entrepreneurial spirit and pride, can affect change in your city. Like Kristen said, there are five key elements in a movement like this. Kristen? Now, this is a formula that can apply to any city, big or little. So there's entrepreneurs, supporters, schools, inclusiveness, and engagement. First is entrepreneurs. Now, first and foremost, a movement amongst a community must be started and led by entrepreneurial leaders. This is the key and the number one ingredient in the formula. A sustainable change will not take place if it is led by government, agencies, or service providers. That's not the basis of grassroots. Small business people are the roots and pillars of your community as their businesses have a tight long-term codependency on your town and also entrepreneurs, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> if your city fails, their business fails. And also, no one knows how to fight through adversity and failure quite like an entrepreneur, because in a grassroots effort, as we have learned, yeah. there will be failures and there will be naysayers. Secondly, supporters. In order to have effective leadership, there must be solid followership. All of those organized groups that can't quite lead a grassroots movement, this is where they come in, and they play a critical role in terms of support. The Biggest Little City movement has seen support from all over the community. We've seen support from the city of Reno, agencies, big and little businesses, including a $100,000 donation from the Peppermill Resort and Casino. But most importantly, the people, the everyday normal citizens of our community have played a crucial role in terms of support. Absolutely. We would not be standing up here today telling you the story at TEDx if the people of our town didn't adopt this movement and help it grow. The third ingredient, schools. Colleges, universities, all types of schools are breeding grounds for fresh ideas, innovation, ambition, and voila, entrepreneurs. Every year a new group of wide-eyed and ambitious freshmen arrive on each college town. Each year, a new batch of innovative and educated seniors are graduating and looking for ways to apply their new knowledge. If you have a university in your town, be a university town. But if you don't, be sure to support and nurture the educational institutions that do exist. There should be fluid boundaries between your community and your local schools. Get them involved. These institutions are the future of your home. The fourth ingredient, be inclusive. If a grassroots movement is going to, well, move, then it must include everyone and everything. When the Biggest Little City movement was being developed, we made sure that we considered all businesses, big and little, and all citizens of our community, regardless of what walk of life they come from. Your movement must be all-inclusive. You cannot leave anybody out. Finally, the last ingredient is engagement. Create something that will get the people excited. Get the people involved. Make it be about them. The citizens of your community are the nucleus of your town. If you can find a way to make your movement be about your people, you can humanize your movement so that it lives on. These are the keys to create an effective grassroots movement. You can take control. It's your city. It's your community. This is your home. And while the Biggest Little City movement set out to change our city's image, a community-driven grassroots movement can apply to any other objective. Ask yourself, 
What do you want to change about your city? Maybe you want your community to fight pollution or graffiti or improve your elementary schools. It can be anything. Get a group of people together and utilize these five ingredients. Entrepreneurs, supporters, schools, inclusiveness, and engagement. We found this to be the formula to spur the change. The greatest asset you have as a community is your pride for the place you call home. Now, grassroots effort doesn't happen overnight. We still have a long ways to go. Our community has not heard the last of us. In fact, we have a group meeting next week. If anyone wants to host us, we're always looking for a place. But I will tell you, do not wait for permission to help your city. We are a group of volunteers with no money and no authority, and we're changing the perception of our town. So I challenge you to go out there, help your town, and find your biggest little city movement. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.